You ever thought about what happens when you add water to a tank? And then spin it really fast? Hi, my name is Ryan. I'm a fourth year applied math and AOS major at UCLA. And today's video is about Newton's bucket. When considering a rotating frame, there are two extra forces that come into play. These so-called non-inertial forces include centrifugal force, which pushes the water outwards, and Coriolis force, which deflects the water to the side. Luckily, when it comes to Newton's bucket, Coriolis doesn't affect the end result, so we'll simply disregard it. And of course, as a given, we have gravity acting on our system in the lab, which is good, otherwise I'd be floating around. So, with gravity pushing downwards, and considering centrifugal force outwards, let's see what that means for our experiment. But first, let's look at our setup. What do we got? So first, we have our DJ turntable, and make sure it's a DJ turntable specifically so you can change the rotation rate. Second, we have our tank, which ours is a square tank, which is 12 inches by 12 inches by 12 inches. Here's a view of all six sides. We have rulers on this side, which we'll use to measure the differences in the shape of the water, which we won't get into in this video, but you can check in the description below. And the bottom of our tank has a nook right in the middle, so you can put the tank on the DJ turntable right here. Next, we have our phone holder attach thing, which you use to attach your phone or any recording device onto the tank while it's been. Lastly, we have our water in any form that you like. Let's put it all together. Now that we have our complete setup, here's a look at it. Here's every view. Let's give it a spin. For our experiment, which we'll see in the next few clips, we tried a bunch of different RPMs to see the effect of rotational speed. So here's our first trial at 16.6 .6 RPM. As you can see, it's moving a little bit too slow to see any real change or to notice anything really. Here is 33 RPM, or revolutions per minute. Still a little bit slow, but you can see a little bit more of the shape. And then here's a different angle for the rest of them as we move a little bit faster. Here's 45 RPM. You can really see that parabola shape start to form. Here's 78 RPM. You can really see that parabola starting to deepen a little bit. And here is 117 revolutions per minute. Here you see a really, really deep parabola shape forming. I've been mentioning it, but the two key takeaways here are this parabola shape forms. And keep in mind that since this is found along the entire tank, the shape of the water is actually a three-dimensional paraboloid. The parabolic shape becomes deeper as rotation rate increases. This paraboloid is created by the interplay between gravity and centrifugal force. Here's how it works. Gravity is a constant force downwards, and centrifugal force is stronger as you move further away, creating this kind of shape. At this point, the system has reached steady state. Gravity and centrifugal force are in what is called hydrostatic balance which causes the water surface to settle into its paraboloidal equilibrium shape. It looks something like this. This is what a paraboloid looks like. But it doesn't end there. The net force changes from this in a non-rotating frame. Note that the surface of the water is flat, as it's perpendicular to the direction of the net force, which is just gravity, to this in a rotating frame, which considers both gravity and centrifugal force you'll notice that the surface of the water is still perpendicular to the direction of the net force at every point. What does this mean? Here's the big main idea of the video. Like, if you only remember one part of this video, let it be this. In the same way that a spherical surface is flat given a planet's radial gravity, a paraboloidal surface is flat for the effect of gravity in Newton's bucket. This means that fluid parcels in a rotating paraboloid all remain stationary relative to the rotating tank, which I think is pretty cool. A huge thank you to everyone over here for making this video possible. And make sure to stay tuned for a part two to this video where we take a look at an application of this paraboloid being effectively flat. I'll catch you guys in the next one.